Hey, what's up, guys? A little bit of bad news this week. Um, God damn. I honestly was more excited for this to do this stream more than anything, and I kept having all these technical problems. Um, I think I have them figured out. I think, I mean, I don't know what the cause of them was, but I've fixed them. Um, but needless to say, I recorded the whole entire stream of me animating uh, this cat and there's just no video of me actually animating it. So I'm going to try to buzz through it uh, just so you can see what I did and try to explain as best I can. You just won't get to see my process of working through it, which is a huge bummer to me. But uh, every every week uh, I try to do a little bit more with the stream and then I fall backwards a little bit because it's I do too much or something breaks. But... That's how it goes. Um, needless to say, yeah, the cat on the screen is what uh, I animated. I made the rig in Illustrator. Um, and as you can see, it's it's pretty flexible. Uh, it can get the sit pose on the left and the walking pose on the right, and I think they both look pretty good. Uh, I've done a few rigs in the past, and... It's tough to have them be very flexible in in my experience. But uh yeah, anyways, I'll get I'll try to buzz through uh what I've done. Um one second. Yeah, so this is uh, the cat made in Illustrator. All the pieces and parts are on different layers, brows, facial layers, ears. Um, the tricky thing with cats is obviously the legs. They have four of them, not just two like humans. So walking, doing a walk cycle is just double the work. Um, they also have a, like more joints that you really need to worry about, on the front legs anyways. The front legs have a fifth joint above the shoulder. Uh, that just gives them a little bit of, I mean, really it, it comes down to their, it's not like really their shoulder, it's their, their feet. They've got the, their toes. Oops. I don't have everything turned on. Yeah. They've got their toes and they've got their like pads and then their calves. So there's five pieces in all for the front and the back leg. Is just toes, foot, calf, thigh. So once I had all the pieces and parts created, and just like a tip, um, one other thing I did was the torso and the pelvis are two different pieces for right now. And uh, the other little tip is just I just based everything off of circles for the joints because that's the best way to make sure you'll get really smooth joint turns without too much issue. Anyways, I used Overlord. I pushed my selection to AE, which is I essentially selected all my shapes and pushed them to AE. And in AE, uh, what you get is this everything comes in exactly the same as your artboard uh, and it's all become shape layers in in after effects which is really cool uh, from here I move anchor points and parent things get my comp size the way I want it uh, add puppet pins here you can see the rig in the in its rigged form Um, let me, let me actually open up a different project. I can at least go through how I rigged. What am I looking? 
looking for here. This is what I'm looking for. Uh, okay. So once I have all my anchor points and parenting done and puppet pins, that's when I can go in and uh, go through Duick. Uh, as you can see, I put four pins on the tail and made them bones. And the base one is connected to the pelvis. I took the torso, how we had the torso front and back. Whoops. Torso front and back are two pieces. I made those a pre-comp and put two puppet pins on them. Uh, torso front, or torso and pelvis. This allows me to just have more stretch in my torso, which is going to be very useful. See that? Which is going to be very useful for a cat because cats are just stretchy by nature. It's going to make it more natural. Um, the other thing you have to do is you have to make these knolls with... They're not parented anything, but they just represent the tiptoe. Those allow Duick to rotate the foot in a more natural way. Um, so yeah, those are just for Duick, nothing else. And so once you get everything all the way you like it, uh, the other thing is I put all the facial features in a head comp. And so I just have the head. It's got kind of everything. And then you select everything, you go to Duick, go to your Digitigrade. Uh, they'll give you a hint if you don't know uh, which animal you should use. So, And then I do full character. And then I see it's my back leg, left leg. So I go to my left back LB. That's what I, left back, that's how I labeled it. So LB thigh. LB calf, LB foot, LB toes, and then in this null objects, that's where you put the LB tiptoe, that little null I was talking about. And then you go ahead and do the same for the other four legs. All right, once you get to this part, if you labeled things correctly, it should fill in. You got your head, your neck, layer, your torso, and your pelvis. And if you've done a tail with puppet pins, these should uh, populate as well based on how you parented them. Uh, this t B tail base, that's my bone here, my puppet pin bone on the base of my tail, and the tail tip is the tip. And I parented them tip to base. So this is parented to this, this is parented to this, and so on. Hit OK. Duick should do its thing. And voila, we have our uh, controllers. We've got, oops, I'm trying to use position, not rotate. We've got a tail rotate. We've got pelvis. So you can sit. We've got our head rotate. Um, one thing is, as you'll notice, I'll move my torso around, my torso control, but I'm not, the torso is not moving. Uh, for whatever reason, I have to come in here and my puppet pin, which is parented to the pelvis, I just reparent it to the shoulder control. And now I'm getting that movement I want. Uh, I'll show you what the nulls are capable of. Um, 
they essentially now we can essentially control all the points of rotation on this cat's foot through the foot rolls and this is only because we put those nulls on there the tiptoe nulls and this is really just this is really useful for cat runs the cat walks anything cat animation you want to be able to move the arm like this that way you can put it in all like if the you want the arm tucked up here and you'd have your you know if you have your paw back and it's all tucked up close like it's just a lot of flexibility with that so that's the rig the only other thing i did was i added the joysticks and sliders and if you've watched any of my other videos with joysticks and sliders and face rigs it's this, it's the exact same stuff so now i essentially can just move my cat's face around move the eyes i can control the brows all the same stuff i did in other ones just on a different character i even did one for the ears and it's so easy now let me open up the last project. So that's essentially how all you have to do. And sadly, you got to miss me making the entire run cycle, but uh, I'll show you a sample of it right here. Actually, let me go to quarter. Good core. Shit, no. So yeah, there it is. It came out really smooth, and uh, what I used as a reference was this uh, Edward Moybridge. I have this book. It's a great book to reference for uh, animal motion and cat motion and stuff like that. Um, I literally just referenced this and basically <clears throat> used various frames as my extremes so I made this pose and then I made this pose this pose this pose and that pose and that was my loop so it's essentially like five poses and then it loops and it actually came out really well just going off of that um, some other references I used throughout the project was the animator survival kit. This is a great book to reference. Um, this is where I, you know, understood that the concept of their torsos need, needing to be stretchy. Um, I used this model sheet for the walk cycle, which is done by Preston Blair. Uh, it's more of a cartoony walk cycle, so I thought that would be a nice different, a nice juxtaposition from using Moybridge, who's obviously using photographs of real animals. Uh, and I got good results from both, I've thought. And the last book I referenced was Animal Locomotion by James Gray. This is a really technical, scientific sort of book. Um but it's a really cool one to just look through and get if you want to get deep into understanding sort of why limbs are moving the way they do or if you want to get really specific with your animations, make something look really realistic, uh, I'd recommend this. Um, I can dive into the rig a little bit. Um, like I said, I, I essentially just, if we go down here, you can even see, like, this is my loop. It's just one. It's this pose. This pose. This pose. This pose. This pose. And then it loops. There's a couple extra keyframes here, here and there in between. And, like, I played with the timing. 
but that's essentially it. And it worked out pretty well. As you can see, like having puppet pins on the torso gave me the ability to stretch the cat wide and also shrink it down f fat. Uh, here you can see I. It was really cool once I start once I got my first round of poses in I could see that there was a there were arcs being made and as I've said arcs are always good in animation um, so I played with those a little bit and tried to make those as apparent as possible And yeah, this really wasn't too hard once I was working off the reference. It was pretty much plug and chug, and then I added some extra facial animation with the joy joystick and slider. And that was basically it. I'm still I still feel terrible that you that I'm depriving you guys of being able to watch me actually suffer through it, but I promise I won't run into this exact same problem next week. Um, we should be back up and streaming. And if not, um, I'm back every Monday with a video. Regardless if the stream works out, I will get some sort of video online of a tutorial or showing process or something. So subscribe, like, follow me. YouTube, Twitch, Vimeo, you can find me. Search my name. And, uh, yeah, so I'll see you back next Monday with another one. Thanks for coming.